This video is brought to you in part by the patrons of the Lazy Eyebrow, and from the comments and watch time from viewers like you. Thank you! Well, hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow, and guess what? It's finally time for the first Legacy Review. This is the diet review for Legacy Drag Strip. It is absolutely no secret that I was not a fan of the Combiner Wars take on Minasaur. In fact, this guy's opinion of that video was it was the most negative review for a figure he'd ever heard. And you know what? I would kind of agree. It was a completely unfair look at the entire set. Does this mean I've changed my final opinion of Combiner Wars Minasaur, though? Not really. While he's not as bad as I was making him out to be seven years ago, he was definitely one of the weaker sets to come out of the Combiner Wars, and I kind of feel like Hasbro's design team felt the same way, and thus convinced the higher-ups to allow them to make a victory lap apology of the race car based Combiner. And boy howdy, let me tell ya, if the rest of the set is as good as this figure, I will humbly kneel and say apology accepted. Like, look at this guy. He's not a perfect representation of the Tyrell P-34, but like, nothing is these days, so no big deal. Well, except for maybe Wonder Boy over here. Anyway, Dragstrip ends up being a fairly close caricature of what his original alt mode was way back in the mid-70s, and I'd say it got just enough of it to be fully recognizable while still being its own thing for copyright reasons. And this caricature of the vehicle just jives with me. Like, you got the big front wedge at the front with those little iconic grooves in the wing. While segmented, you still get that big cone-shaped cockpit. I get how it needs to move for transformation, however it's still sort of a shame that it ends up being so gappy and uncoordinated, and I do wish that gold had been carried all the way down the length of the conical shape. But the thought is there, so that's neat, I guess. One thing I also think is kind of neat, as out of proportion as it is, Dragstrip's head also becomes a little seat for the driver. It is the weirdest use of a hollowed out head that I've seen, but I much rather the effort put in to make it seem like it's a part of the car, rather than it just being the head hanging out here by itself for us to pretend like it's something. Though I will admit that fake engine being visible here is kind of annoying to me anyway. I feel like they're trying to make it feel like it's some sort of steering wheel, console, thing, but it's just not doing it for me. That being said, I really do like the paint they use for both it and the actual engine found at the back. It's this nice silver that just grabs your attention. Something inaccurate, but I totally dig as a design change, are these angled engine intakes here. I missed this in pictures until I had it in hand, but it just looks so neat, and it's a really great way to mold geometry that's needed to keep the robot together later. The rear wing, though, is this really weird shape. Like, I know this is going to become feet pretty soon, but, like, that surface is supposed to be flat. On another note, one really cool thing I found was the bottom of the car. Like, tell me this isn't the cleanest undercarriage you've ever seen for mainline figures. You can't. You just can't. And not only is it clean beyond all reason, but they've even gone the extra mile to mold in exhaust pipes coming out of these square bits like it's just the underside of the engine or something. That is just so cool. Wait, what the heck? Is that a drive shaft? I mean, A for effort, I guess. That's just not supposed to be there, though. Oh well. As for the tires, it's really cool that they return to the six wheel design that everyone insists Drag Strip must be. Though, I must ask, why are we still using open wheeled visible pegs? The lamest of the lamest choice for wheel attachment options for a toy. I suppose it's not the end of the world, though. I mean, they did at least paint the back peg black so it wasn't super noticeable at the back, which I'll admit that's a nice touch, again, for only the back. And the hobbyist designers with printers have been dealing with this for so long that we've pretty much gotten it nailed down at how to fix it. Like, take these hubcaps designed by Robot78. These are designed to look like the original rims from the P-34, and they just slot into the pegs themselves. These look great in a static pose, as due to their design, they won't rotate with the tire. However, the trade-off is that you're very unlikely to break your figure trying to remove the tires for a full replacement. And by way of segue, this brings me to my design. I have removed my wheels, as one of them was missing from the package, and have replaced them with wheels I designed that not only cap the rims, but also feature more accurate tire widths as well. The design of which can be found on my cults page. So basically, you have two options if you don't like visible pegs. A very simple and safe design that slots into existing hardware, or new tires entirely, permanently installed at your own risk. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's talk accessories. Drag Strip comes with two purple guns, both of which are designed to peg in beside the engine. Why two when in the cartoon he only had one? 
This is actually a G1 toy reference in which they all had these dual cannon clip-on things. And this redesign for Legacy is much more palatable to me. Still onboard weapons, but also their own things, so you can actually wield them later in robot mode, which is super cool. And the added bonus that they don't look that out of place in vehicle mode either. I'd say this is a win in terms of design and referencing, and hey, you can even double them up and side mount them if you're the kind of the person that puts milk in before your cereal. As for size comparison, Classics Mirage, Kingdom Mirage, Earthrise Smokescreen, and Earthrise Wheeljack. Or how about your honorary Stunticons, like Kingdom Sideswipe, Power of the Prime's Wind Charger, Earthrise Optimus Prime, and 86 Jazz. Other comparisons sees the likes of Earthrise Trailbreaker, Kingdom Tracks, and for a more topical comparison, Combiner Wars Smokescreen and Wheeljack, because I no longer have the Combiner Wars Stumpticons in my possession. Now how about the actual scale? The best I can come up with is that he's 130. The closest I have in that range is Generations Drift and MPM Ironhide, which, uh, yeah. At first I was like, no, no, there's no way this is right. But then I found these pictures, one from way back in the day when the P-34 was still in prototype phase, and the other from Transformers 07, and now here's everything with a scale 5'8 figuring, and, uh, yeah, I guess this is scale. Drag Strip sure is a tiny boy, isn't he? So that was Dragstrip's vehicle mode. He is such a neat little bot that looks super clean from nearly every angle, and that includes from below. Save for maybe the spoiler, as I still have yet to get over that, all the changes for copyright's sake feel unintrusive and tasteful as like a second generation of the P-34 if it had have been competitive, and if F1 hadn't introduced the rule to ban the six-wheel concept. In short, this is one epic vehicle mode, and I very much hope that the other Sundacons live up to this level of quality in the coming months. <laughs> The Transformers will return after these messages. This episode of Lazy Eyebrow was sponsored by Ridge Wallets. And, well, yes, by law, I do have to disclose that this is a sponsored segment. This is actually a product I was looking into getting in the first place, and therefore one I highly recommend. Like, for reference, this is my bulky old wallet that has spots for seven different cards and a pouch for money, and then compare that to the Ridge Wallet that I've been using for about a month now. And even though it holds up to 12 cards, it still takes up 51.6% less space in my pocket than the wallet with nothing in it. And more pocket room is just the beginning of its features. Its durable design means that you won't be cracking up your credit cards like I was constantly having the issue with my old wallet, so that you can keep your cards physically safe. And the RFID lined walls help keep your cards digitally safe. In fact, Ridge is so confident in their product that not only are they going to give you a lifetime warranty on the wallet, they're also going to give you 45 days to test drive the wallet to see if you like it. And if you don't, no problem. Send it right back to get yourself a full refund. So check the link in the description below or the pinned comment where you can order your own in a choice of 30 different colors and finishes. This particular one is the carbon fiber one. And use code LAZYIRBOW to get 15% off your next purchase. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. This episode is also brought to you by Transfixed. Transfixed is a channel that has Transformers, and he fixes them. So he slammed those two words together and made a channel that won't get him anywhere in the YouTube search algorithm. Mind you, he also does more than just fix things. He also does a review for Star Wars, G.I. Joe, and other various 80s toys and cartoons. So, wait, wouldn't that make him Star Joe viewed? No, no, that's too complicated. So check out Transfixed today, a channel where people with little time and skill can get tips on customizing Transformers. Transformers. So now on to transformation. To transform drag strip, start by opening up the undercarriage at the back and extending the legs. Rotate the spoiler feet down and rotate the waist 180 degrees and separate the legs. Unpaid the cockpit, rotate it 180 and leave it out of the way for now. Unclip the side skirts from the bottom of the vehicle, split the front wing in half and swing it all down to the sides. Rotate the spoilers back and flip up the second wheel set so that the wheels become horizontal to the ground, then rotate the side skirts up. Finally, flip the head up and collapse the cockpit until the intakes peg into the shoulder, and you're done. So here's drag strip in robot mode, and, uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to nail down what I really think of this. Like, it's wholly accurate to the animation model, something that Hasbro has been absolutely nailing lately, with specifically the G1 figures, and I guess Override apparently, and that's good. It should be. But maybe I'm just not a fan of the animation model, or really drag strip as a robot, or something? Basically, it's a lot of yellow. All those really cool red stripes he had more or less disappeared unless you look at the figures from the side, but otherwise, yeah, kinda bland. 
Which I get, that's an animation model thing and not a knock to the toy, and I don't even know where to begin if I wanted to change it, because doing this doesn't seem to look all that great either, and we don't talk about 2015. That's not to say there's not positives, though. I totally love the head sculpt. Just with the way the little ear nubs come out and the silver-plated grimace coupled with the visor, it just screams a Star Fox goon to me, and I am down for that. I just wish the paint had a slight tinge of blue to the silver. Not a lot. Enough to be silver still, but still feel like a toy reference. But that's just kind of a nitpick at this point. Pity about the front wing, though. They look weird up here like the world's biggest popped collar. At least they're angleable, though, so he can deflect incoming sniper headshots. I like that a solution was innovated for making the second set of wheels not interfere with the shoulder movement or anything by having them rotate back like this. However, the fact that it's the square rotated back at a non-determinate angle is sort of messing with my eye for geometric harmony here. The faux engine, while annoying to me personally, does look right at home in there. All the undercarriage detail makes its appearance here is semi-accurate cartoon detail, what with the kneecaps here and all, but if you're a stickler for cartoon minimalism then the exhaust pipes might bug you. Finally, the feet themselves look great as the underside of the spoiler. I personally wish that the red had been carried on towards the indent here for just the tiniest bit of contrast and color for the robot mode. Like, there's even a spot for it, but that's okay. It's an easy mod, and whether I do it or Toy Hacks does it, and I'm sure it'll eventually get done for me. So as for the new tires, they look a little more prominent, especially the rear ones in the leg, but that's something you'll have to keep in mind if you choose to upgrade them to mine. So that was the robot mode. In terms of just design, it's pretty good. As far as aesthetics, it hits the cartoon accurate mark, but I don't really think that's a compliment personally. It is, again, really bland, and I'm aware it's very accurate to the cartoon source material. I just personally don't like it. As for accessories, again, he gets the pistols. These can dual wield if that's your fancy, stack them together for a double barrel cannon, or you can buy 20 drag strips and stack the gun sideways into eternity, or just toss one aside if you just wanted to have the one pistol. It's accurate, it does the job, and you got options. That's great! As for articulation, the head is on a post for full rotation. Provided the front wing isn't in the way, the arms can rotate 360 with outward movement. Bicep swivel, and the elbows bend a bit past 90 degrees, which is always nice. Wrist swivel is entirely non-existent though, so that's less than pleasant. Waist swivels and bisects for the inevitable upcoming crossover movie. Hips go all the way forward and all the way backward and all the way out, which is awesome that I can do that at all and still combined. Like, buddy, what's your problem? Thigh swivel and knees bend at 90 degrees, though unfortunately the shin to thigh ratio is so disproportionate that kneeling and superhero landings are always going to be a bit of a challenge for him. Finally, ankle tilt and a byproduct of the transformation means that the feet also go backwards. I mean, I wish they also go forwards, but I'll take what I can get. As for size comparison, here's Earthrise Barricade and Runamuck, Kingdom Mirage and Wheeljack, 86 Jazz, Earthrise Optimus, Power of the Prime's Wind Charger, x Bot's Boost, and Kingdom Sideswipe. Anyway, as for figures that actually scaled with them, here he is next to Drift, MPM Ironhide, and our little 5'8 fella. So that was Legacy Dragstrip. I very much feel that this is leaps and bounds better than what they gave us seven years ago. He looks stellar in both modes, especially if you're looking for that cartoon color scheme, and can get past the spoiler flaps chilling out on top. The vehicle mode is absolutely stunning and easily the cleanest I've ever seen in undercarriage. Like, I am still stuck on that. It's insane what they've pulled off here. And, in general, I cannot wait to see what the other four Stunicons will be like in hand. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow. Thank <laughs> you.